this is Mr. O, and this is the diary of Amos Lee. I sit, I write, I fly. This is the diary of Amos Lee. I sit, I write, I flush. By Adeline Fu. It was illustrated by Stephanie Wong and published by Epigram Books in 2009. It is about Amos Lee, a 10 year old boy from Singapore. At least, I'm guessing he's 10. He's 12 in the third book, and each book lasts one year, so. Anyway, he lives with his mum, a journalist, his dad, who works at the airport, and his little sister, Maymay, whom he calls WPI for whiny, pesky, irritating. Amos writes his diary while sitting on the toilet, hence the title of this book, which is appropriate for me because I watch YouTube on the toilet. I might be watching this video right now on the toilet, and you'd never know. Uh, that's weird. Uh, anyway, when his mum gets a job covering events and tourist attractions in Singapore, she brings Amos and WPI with her, and Amos finds plenty to write about along the way. Not to mention the usual dramas of school. Will Amos manage to avoid the school bully and save up for the latest gadget? Read The Diary of Amos Lee to find out. I enjoyed Amos Lee a lot. Uh, I always really enjoy diaries. Uh, I don't know why, I think maybe I just like the idea of reading somebody else's thoughts, but also diaries tend to have quite short entries, it's whatever happens on one particular day, so if you are reading it bit by bit, you're not worried that you're stopping in the middle of a chapter, you just read to the end of that entry and put your bookmark in and off you go, come back to it later. So yeah, I like diaries a lot and this is no exception. I think it's a very funny idea of writing on the toilet. Uh, I can't say that uh, I've ever tried that myself or that I would even recommend it uh, reading on the toilet. Well, anyway, uh, it's also quite funny. <laughs> I can really imagine Amos Lee's mother coming up with this idea of getting him to write a lot more. I mean, if we're honest, us teachers and parents, we're always trying to get boys to read and to write. Uh, you know, and there's something to be said for, you know, if you're gonna sit there anyway, why not do something? I also like the fact that it is a very local book. It has a real local flavor. Now, not local to Hong Kong, it's local to Singapore. But, you know, you, it's not trying to be, it's not trying to appeal to all people. This book is trying to appeal to young people in Singapore, and I think it really does that. I imagine there's loads of stuff in here that uh, young people in Singapore will enjoy reading about, um, and thinking about, and that's great. The other thing that I really enjoyed, I don't know whether you would enjoy this, but it's really definitely of its time period, which is 2008. And there's two specific things that you can really, well, three actually, three things that really tell you that this takes place in 2008. First of all, the tickets are all dated 2008. You can see that. The second, um, it mentions the Sichuan earthquake, which I remember very clearly happening in 2008. In fact, it happened just after um, I arrived in Hong Kong. Third, um, it talks about the financial crisis. Now, you might not know too much about this. Uh, it doesn't talk about it that much in the book, but towards the end, some of the parents and some of the families are having some money difficulties, and that is related to what was happening at the end of 2008 around Asia. For the negatives, um, I'm actually gonna go back to one of my positives for one of my negatives, and that is that it is very, very local. I mean, it really talks about Singapore and Singapore things a lot. It especially talks about how great it is to live in Singapore, how wonderful it is to be Singaporean, and how Singapore is the best at X, Y, and Z. You don't believe me? Let's have a look at some examples. <laughs> 